Hi, I'm Carl. I have a bunch of bad boards. We had a run of 25 boards and eight of them didn't work. They all failed in pretty much the same way. They were checked for component placement, orientation, things look good. Typically it's short circuits that cause these problems. Oftentimes it's shorts between pins, but uh, we couldn't find any shorts between pins. So we'll try to see if we can figure out what's shorted. I make short sniffers. I'm pretty proud of them. Uh, I think the short sniffer will help us find these things. But first we have to find which nets are shorted. Typically with microprocessors it's address lines or data lines because that's what most of a mi microprocessor is. Um, we're going to try to see if we can find a way to identify lines that might be shorted. Typically if you have a way to stimulate the lines, I've got a computer set up over here that tries to load the flash memory that exercises the address and data lines. We can look at the waveforms to see what a good waveform looks like and then short a couple of them intentionally to see what a bad waveform looks like. Then all we have to do is look for bad waveforms. So in the process I'm going to run the software that stimulates the flash programming routine and take a look and see what the data lines look like. We'll give you a close-up on the scope so you can see what that looks like for a good waveform and then we'll intentionally short a couple pins together to show you what a bad waveform is. In most cases shorting pins together doesn't cause a problem. Um, I've never seen it cause a problem. If you short lines together and it blows your processor, I'm sorry. It's so hard not to laugh or breathe hard. Here's a scope shot of data line D0. I'm sending the flash program command. This is what activity looks like on that line as it's being driven. Now move over to data line D1. Program flash again. Looks like pretty reasonable logic high, logic low, and then the intermediate tri-state in between the data pulses. Shorting those two lines together should give us a picture of what shorted data lines look like. Here we go. Notice the compromise level, the mid-level following the uh, data activity, the, the runt pulse is there. So those are bad lines. We'll continue along. Data line D3. That looks reasonable. Data line D4 looks good. Move on to the next one. Ooh, there was some bad stuff there. Let's do it again. So, program. Yes, this one looks like a bad one. That's shorted to another data line. Now we can use an ohmmeter to find out what other data line it's shorted to. I put a post-it note down uh, to mark the bad data line. It's shorted to some other data line. The bus buffers that the post-it note covers are a convenient place to see these things. If I touch the first one, check beeper beeps. Let's check the next data line. Nothing, nothing, nothing. There, next, next, and we have a short to the fifth pin on the second IC. So we found the two pins that are shorted together. Now we need to figure out where on this system they connect. Sounds like a job for the short sniffer. short sniffer is set up. I've attached the current injection probes to inject the test current into the two nodes. I've also marked those traces with a felt pen so they're a little bit easier to see. The current
current comes in through the probe. We can follow it in the trace. Hear the sound as the inductive pickup coil follows the sound of the current flowing in the trace. And the current stops flowing in the trace here. There's a via right there. The current obviously dives down through that via and follows a trace that goes at right angles to it on the back side of the board. This current flowing in this other trace comes along and and it doesn't continue along the trace. There's a via right there. So going to the other side of the board, we'll see what happens. I mark the traces on the other side of the board and here's the first trace that we found that dove to the other side. Current flows in this trace. Oops, it only flows halfway down the trace. So it flows in this trace and it must jump over to the other trace right there. And we can check it in the microscope. Should be a short right in there. Here's the traces from the back of the board. You can hear the current coming into this trace. Follow it down this trace. And it doesn't continue down the trace. So it has to be jumping over to this other trace right there. Let's zoom in on it. Underneath the solder mask, you can see a discoloration. There's a solder bridge under there. Hey, these boards were electrically tested. Hmm, yeah, right. 